Hello, my name is Brother Miguel, and we're back once again with a lesson called Words That Come From the Bible. And I, like always, before I begin, I'd like to say thank y'all for those who tune in and watch. I thank y'all so much. I pray that y'all stay fast with the Lord. Let me stand strong with His Word and never give it up. No matter what uh, evil comes your way, you stay strong, and I pray for y'all that y'all doing those things. You know what I mean? Also, like I said, thank those who are here. And before we get started, I remember last time, I think last video, I was saying I'm going to do a, a lesson about confessing your sins. Before, before we jump into this, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, dear Lord, we come to you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for all the things that you do for us and all the love by the gospel of grace you have given us dear lord those who stay fast in your word we thank you so much for that mm -hmm. and we pray father god keep giving us all the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding that we need dear lord to become better christians dear lord grow spiritually in your word help us dear lord to overcome evil with good and not give up we come to our eternal soul father god mm -hmm. always stay fast we come to your word and stay strong when we come to your word father god we thank you for so much dear lord one for you we don't know where we'll be at right now to this day and for those out here who are suffering behind coronavirus, who had lost lives, their loved ones, dear Lord, and who had lost, uh, who had poverty, excuse me, who had poverty as well behind it. Mm -hmm. May have them in bad times, bless them in good times, give them things that are right to their needs. We just thank you, Father God, for everything, Father God. So please mm -hmm. keep on helping us to grow spiritually in your word and keep doing things that always, always have pleased and acceptable in your sight. So give us more wisdom and knowledge and understanding as we go through your lesson today, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, guide us through your word and, and help us to overcome anything we cannot overcome, dear Lord, that's in our minds and in our hearts right now, Father God. Help us, dear Lord. And we pray all these prayers to you in your most divine holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Once again, for those out there still going through the terrible effects of coronavirus, the pandemic is not over with. I'm very, real, very, very sorry. But stay strong. Never give up. Those who lost loved ones, they had from the uh, pandemic or just lost loved ones, period. Stay strong. Never give up with God. Never give up. That one Satan wants, Satan wants your heart. So he won't throw a monkey wrist in a plan to try to keep us from not following God. He can do all he can do to do that. So you got to stay strong. Now let's go to once again a lesson it's called Words of Comfort from the Bible. And like I said last uh, video that if our profession your sins, when we obey God through the gospel, we got to do everything. We can't pick and choose what we want to do through the gospel. Well, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to do this. God said do this, but I'm not going to do this. You know what I mean? You got to do everything what it says to do in the Bible if you want to have eternal life. Trust me, it's not, it's not hard if you follow in Christ by his word. It's not hard. Trust me. Some people try to make it hard for you if you're not following God the right way. But trust me, people make it hard for you if you are following God the right way. The screws don't get me wrong. But still, it's easy when you follow in God. And you know where your, your, uh, your faith and your love lies in. It lies in with God. Not this word, it lies in with God. So let's get started. Turn with me to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. That is Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Once again, that is Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Y'all have here? Mm -hmm. And it reads, once again, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all have sinned. That means your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your grandparents. Well, we all have sinned. We all have sin. When people walk around and they don't, they don't sin, they're lying to you. We all have sin. 
<laughs> I can I have been around people I talk to say, well, they don't see it. They don't do this. I, whoa, I mean, I proceed by ignoring the word of God. You know they are lying. The kind of Bible teaches us that we have all sinned. And we all have fell short of the glory of God. Now, turn with me. Even, even, even uh, Old Testament tells us about confessing sins. Even in the Old Testament, it tells us about confessing sins. What we got to do, like I said before, this is obeying the gospel, obeying the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, let's, let's go to the part where with me real fast. Let me go right back to uh, 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 New Testament. Let's go to Old Testament real fast with me. That's Proverbs. And chapter 28. At verse 13, that's Proverbs, Old Testament now, chapter 28, at verse 13. Once again, that is Proverbs, chapter 28, at verse 13. You got it? You got Abraham? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it reads, He that covered his sins shall not prosper. Tells you right there. He that covered his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Tell you clearly right there. So you walk around here and you got sin. You can't confess your sins to those who you are, the, a person you have sinned against. Then trust me, you will not prosper in God. You will not prosper. You might prosper in this world, but if we come to God, you will not prosper. He tell you what to do. He also tell you, but who confesses his sins? And for a second thing, that means you confess your sins. I did wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And then you do what? You forsake that sin. You don't keep on going right back and keep doing it. You turn, I mean, you confess your sin and beg, leave it alone. You don't keep going back and keep doing it. And this, and this, and this, the, the Bible teaches that I like once again. I say this a lot, but because it's the truth, I don't say that, but the Bible says that. Mm -hmm. So when you go out here, and you confess your sins to someone. You go out here, and you confess it, and then you forsake it, mm -hmm. and keep on following the Lord. And that's it. And I'm showing you at the end of this reason why it's so important. That don't worry about it. You know, I worry about what God thinks about you, and I promise you that. Look at Numbers. This is the Old Testament now. That's Numbers. Chapter 5. 5 through 7. That's Numbers, Old Testament, by Deuteronomy, if I'm not mistaken. By Deuteronomy, yeah. Numbers, chapter 5, and verse 5 through 7. No, I'm just Numbers chapter 5, I get it. 5 through 7. You want to have any questions? Uh, somebody can like to read that one, please. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit to do a trespass against the Lord, and that person be guilty. Then they shall confess their sins. Two for a second, for a second. Sorry. They, do, they should do what? They should confess their sins. Mm -hmm. They should confess their sins. Well, you go out here, you do something against the Lord, and I'm, just, I'm, trust, I'm about to show you in the book of Luke. You go out here, do something to the Lord or the person you sin against, you confess, you confess to God that I sin to you. And then that person you sin against, you tell that person, you tell that person, you know what I mean? And then you forsake your sins. You tell them, listen, I'm sorry what I've done. I'll plead forgive me. You know what? Right? But you know what? You came to God the right way. That's what you really were concerned about. God forgave me. I can't let you know that. You don't forgive me, but at least I know God forgave me. Then you forsake your sins. Leave it alone. You'll keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You keep on winning. I'm sorry. Stop mm -hmm. you. Then they shall confess their sin, which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. 
We all have sin. We all have made mistakes out here. No one without mistakes, without sin. But the thing is about sin is you confess your sins. That's showing God that now I fear, I'm under your fear. I confess to you that I have sinned. As now, I will come to that person who I sin against. And I'm confess to them. And then I'm going to forsake my sins. I'm going to leave them alone. You know what? And I'm going to keep on walking right with God. You know what? We're going to stumble and make mistakes on the way. We're going to keep on fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And that's a true belief when you stay in the Word of God. That's a true belief when you obey the gospel of Christ. When you obey Him. That being, being water baptized, that being staying in the Word of God, that is obeying the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not just read it, but you are in his word, and with the way he giving you knowledge, it's telling you, you're obeying it, and you're growing in it, and you're growing, and you're growing, and you're growing, and you're growing. Let me show you how confess sins. And once again, look at Luke chapter 5, 11 to 24. That uh, New Testament now, Luke. Chapter 5. Luke chapter 11, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. See? Luke chapter 15, I'm sorry. Luke chapter 15, thank you so much. Luke chapter 15, for those out there, that's Luke chapter 15, 11 through 24. That's Luke chapter 15, 11 through 24. This is how you actually, you go out, you confess your sins to the person you say, I'm not saying you got to go around the whole globe and try to find anybody you sin against. No, I'm not saying that. I said, but that one you sin against, who in your presence right now, you better confess your sins to. Look, uh, that's, and, that, and, that's, and let me show you by example what the Bible say. Uh, somebody can read it for me, uh, please. Okay. And he said... A certain man had two sons. Oh, so that, and he said, that means Jesus said. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. What was that, please? Before we go further, trust me, when you got money and you got things out here that other people might want, trust me, they're your friends. They're your friends. You, you got this, you got money, you got car, you got alcohol, whatever they want, they're your friends. I promise you that. But as soon as you read this, as soon as he lost everything, his friends was gone. I'm sorry, you go with it. <laughs> and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's? have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Stop right there. He going to say to his father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Who he going to say to? The one who he sinned against. The one who he sinned against. Yeah, it's okay to say, God, forgive me. I have sinned. You know what I mean? But then you go out and you tell a person who you sin against. You just don't say, well, oh, okay, I sin, God, I, I, I sin. And I'll show you an example of that too. And John, uh, the next one I think, uh, 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 God, I have sinned, but I don't want to, I don't, uh, I don't want to confess my sins to, uh, to the one that I sin against. And he just said, God, I sin because I have saw God before. But the one I sin against, I'm too afraid to tell that person that. But he didn't want to give me eternal life. So that's why I'm saying, if you don't do that, then you don't, you still fear that person. You're not fearing God. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? You got to be have a fear of God in you. And I'm sorry, keep on reading. 
and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. How about that again? What he said, he did again. He said, Father, I sinned against heaven. Who is, who's in heaven? God's in heaven. And I sinned against you. You know what? You know what? That's, that's how you confess your sins. You know what? You know you did wrong. You did wrong out here. And I know I sinned against you. And I know I did that. So come clean, right? If you want eternal life. See, it's hard. I mean, where the gospel is not getting to preach, where people tell you you say it this way, or you say it that way, or you say it that way without obeying what the word of God say, trust me, it's harder for a person they don't understand. It's, it's harder for a person to to uh, uh, to go out here and think and do the things. The God wants you to do, you know, right? But people hear this and well, hey, the Bible said nothing about confessing those sins, you know, right? What, 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 I'm sorry, excuse me, they, they be afraid that the, the preacher said nothing about confessing those sins, but well, the Bible says so. See what I'm saying? And so, and so when you hear stuff like, you're like, well, my preacher said, I ain't got to do all that. Preacher said, I just got to do is come to church and you know, give some money, you know, right? And, you know, I bring my Bible with me and stuff like that, see some praise, and I'm saved. I mean, I, like I say again, I don't talk about no Bible. The church, some church I've been in, I've seen this with my own eye. So, and so it's, it's, it's so it's kind of hard with people who hear the truth of God's word to about faith about hearing the word of God. That's Romans chapter uh, seventeen, verse ten. Faith about hearing the word of God, and you got to continue in the faith. That Colossians one through twenty three, you got to continue in the word of God, you know, right? and you see for yourself. You see what the things I have to do out here if I want a turn of life, you know, right? Because sometimes, you know, right, the Bible teaches us that all men have not faith. That means all men out here not teaching the gospel. See what I'm saying? All men have not faith. Corinthians, Second Corinthians tells us that it gonna be ministers of Satan out here, you know, right? Deceiving people's soul. So that be all people is not following Christ at all. See what I'm saying? They just deceiving you, tell you say it that way, 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 or or tell you that you get to God. Uh, uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it's another way to get to God to the Father. You gotta go to Jesus. You can't go to uh, another way. You know, right? Like they tell people this stuff. If you don't know this for yourself. Then you can be deceived. Like, man, I didn't even know that. I didn't know how to do this stuff. I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know how to do it. Because I didn't know. I didn't know at all. So I'm listening to what they pray, right? With the brother, brother up there speaking, I'm listening to what he's saying. And I go back home. I'm going to live my exact same life. Trust me, exact same life. And I'm not ashamed any longer. But I'm sorry. So keep on being for it, please. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this, my son was dead, and is mm -hmm. alive again. He mm -hmm. was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, he was getting married, now he was lost, now he found, right? Makes the prodigal son, he was lost, and now he's found, right? I mean, he was lost out here in this world, and now he mm -hmm. came back. He came back. It's like right now, we lost out here. When we come back to Christ the right way, I've been there. I was lost out there. When you came to Christ, I was lost as well. You came to Christ back the right way. Now I'm found. Because why? I'm in the gospel. I'm, now I'm under God, the fear of the Lord. I'm under God, fear. I'm under the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. And I'm following God. I'm not following this world any longer. That make any, it might be question. That make any sense. It might be a question. Because it, 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 it's, the reason why I say that because I know how it is to be out here, don't know something. And then when you go and you hear something different, oh, I ain't paying that to, I ain't paying that no mind. You know what I mean? I've been there. But then, when it comes to our eternal soul, you better pay it some mind. Pay it some mind, because this is your eternal soul. Because, like I said again, once God calls you home, 
And Hebrew tells us, you know, like, if it's appointed from um, once a man to die, until the, after that, the judgment, once you die, that's it. You got to check right now while you live it. You better get it right and hear God. And, and, and somebody got faith about hearing the word of God. You hear the word of God. You better have, I want to hear the God. I want to stay in God's word. I want, I'm getting the truth because it's right here. The scriptures are right here. They're right here. I'm not sitting up and saying something about what, what I think in my heart. The scriptures are right here. Well, I do, all I do is pick up my Bible, a King James Version Bible. Uh, uh, not new King James Version, but King James Version Bible, pick it up, and I just study. That's it. And stay in God's Word. And listen to what He's telling me to do. That's it. You know for yourself. Look at 1 John chapter 1 and verse 10. That 1 John chapter 1 verse 10. 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Thank you, sister. That's uh, 1, John, 1 John chapter 1 1 through 10, about confessing your sin. And read this. First John, chapter 1, 1 through 10. We all have it? Mm -hmm. Once again, that's First John, chapter 1, 1 through 10. And it reads, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. they talking about Jesus Christ. That's a different lesson. Verse 2. For the life was manifest, fasted, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show it to you that eternal life was with the Father and was manifest, manifest excuse me, unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son Jesus Christ. So who shall I have fellowship with? The apostles. Try to have fellowship with the Father and the Son. Because if I have fellowship with the apostles who wrote the Bible, God came through there, through the Holy Ghost, have to write, wrote the Bible. And I have fellowship with them, I can have fellowship with the Father and the Son. That's what it's saying. So I gotta have fellowship with who? The apostles, the, the disciples, the one who wrote the Bible. To have fellowship with who? The Father and the Son. And without that, I don't have fellowship with the Father and the Son. You can see you talk to God all day, you know, right? I talk to God all day, I pray all day, but if I'm not, if I don't have, and trust me, I promise you, in, uh, in the Bible, we're talking about having fellowship with Jesus Christ. Only way you have fellowship with Jesus Christ is through the apostles. It talks about that in the Bible. I promise you that. Promise you that. And like I said, it's another lesson. But that's what that means. Okay. We, okay. Verse 4. At this things right we unto you, that your joy may be uh, before. Watch this. This is very close. This thing is a message which we have heard of him. Okay. Who heard the message? They heard the message. Who heard the message? The apostles heard the message. Who heard the message? The, the apostles. The, the disciples, they became the apostles. Who heard the message then? Y'all think? They heard the message. We, I didn't hear it. I wasn't before yet. Yeah. I didn't hear it. They did. So who I should have fellowship with? The apostles. The apostles. Watch this. This day, verse 5, this day is a message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and him is no darkness at all. Let me break this down to you. God, who's the light? God is the light. Okay. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, tells us the word was God. Gospel of John, chapter 1, and verse 1 tells us that the word was God. So who's the light? Yeah. God's the light. So if the word was God, do you think his uh, word's the light as well? That's kind of what it says. <laughs> if the word was God, God's the light, his word's the light as well. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1 through 6 clearly tells us that uh, the light called the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. 
the light of the, the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Like I said, that's a different lesson. And keep on uh, uh, reading. Verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. That means those who say they have fellowship with Jesus Christ, I mean God, Jesus Christ, it's God. But they walk in dark. What I mean by walk in dark, that means they ain't walking in the light. The light of God's gospel of Christ. They are lying. They are lying. They, they, walk, they are lying to you. I promise you that. I'll keep up with you so you can see for yourself. But those out here who say, I, I, I have fellowship with Jesus Christ, but they walk in it, but they ain't, they ain't walking in the light. I'm about to show you that. They are lying to you. But watch this. Look at verse. Uh, Seven. But if we walk in the light, see what I'm saying? We walk in the light. As he's in the light. Who's in the light? God's in the light. We have fellowship with one another. We have fellowship with the apostles. We have fellowship with God, right? <laughs> see, once, once again, but if you walk in, but if we walk in light, we walk in the light of glorious gospel of Christ. As he's in the light, God's in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleansed us from all sins. Now we are Father in Christ. You think that you as you walk with God, as you walk in on this journey, and you follow God by the light of glory, God of Christ, you're gonna make the mistakes. But God is in you, and he's gonna cleanse you from all sins. His son is in you. Well, I said that. Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. Faith come by hearing the word of God. Let Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. Ephesians chapter 3, 15 through 17. His son's in you. He cleansed God. His son is sinless. So his son is in you. You're going to be sinless too. His son's in you. Had any questions with that? Verse 8. If we say we have no sin, see what I'm saying? If we say we have no sin, we deceive our own self. And the truth is not in us. But the truth is the word of God. John 7, 17. Well, watch this. If we say we have no sin, that means those out here who can do what? Confess their sins. See what I mean? That you said that you have what? No sin. Mm -hmm. And what? The truth is not in you. The word of God is not in you. Because the uh, gospel of John chapter 17, 17 tells us that the, uh, uh, the truth is the word. The word is Jesus Christ and the word is the truth. So, but those guys say, well, okay, they know they sin, they can't not confess it. The one they sin against, you know what? You say you have no sin then. Okay, you can't confess your sins. So I, I don't, once again, I don't, I'm not saying that. Let's go what the Bible teaches. Keep on reading. Have any questions? But watch verse 9. If we confess our sins, See that? If we confess our sins, I mean, we got to obey the gospel. We got to confess our sins. I can't pick and choose what I want to do right in the Bible. I got to confess my sins. You know right? I can't pick and choose. Like I'm going out and buying some shoes somewhere. You know right? No, I can't pick and choose. You know right? I got I got to do what the Bible says. I got to confess my sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See what I'm saying? And we can all I do is confess, you know right? God Almighty, He's the one I gotta worry about. He is the one I gotta worry about. That's it. He tell you what He's gonna do. You confess your sins. I will cleanse you. Right? You know if I confess. <coughs> right here. Right sin. And we say that we have not sinned. So what I'm saying? Now remember the very first Romans said we had all sinned, right? And we say that we have not sinned. And you can't confess it. We make him a liar. And his word is not in us. First it said the truth is not in us. said his word. So what's the truth? The word. His word is not in you. If his word is not in you, I promise you that Christ is not in you. Christ is not in you. If the word is not in you, because Jesus Christ is the word of God in the flesh. 
Gospel of John chapter 1, 1 through 14, that Christ the Word was made flesh. And if his word is not in you, Christ is not in you. And why faith come by hearing the word of God? And the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. Let the word uh uh it's, it's 10, I'm sorry, excuse me saying uh, uh let Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. Let me get that I get that right now. It so said, let Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. How did Christ dwell in my heart by faith? And faith came by hearing the word of God. Only by his word. And they also say in Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alright? If the word dwell in me, Christ is dwelling in me. Then you know what? When I do, when you go out and confess your sin, hey, I got the word in me. Can you actually, actually, you, you not going out here and doing no Jerry Springer trying to get ready or something like that? No. You actually come to that person because you, you have godly sorrow. Oh, yeah, godly sorrow in your heart. What you have did, you know, you're pinning up, you're pinning up your sins. You, know, you got godly sorrow and you confess your sin. And that's what you do. You keep on following Christ. That's what the Bible teaches about confessing sins. Don't let Satan or no one deceive you. Don't let even me deceive you. Don't let me. Trust me, I'm more than a man that's too. I'm a servant of God. But don't let me deceive you as well. Stay in the word of God. Know it for yourself. The scriptures are right here. Right here. And for you to, uh, for us to grow. It's not the Bible here for a reason. For us to grow. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, I don't know this, uh, uh, the Alice, what the Alice is? That's where they, they drain the blood out of you, right? Somebody the Alice? Yeah. Uh, that's where they, uh, they, uh, you, they uh, your kidneys be them fail. So they drain and put some uh, more, uh, Blood, whatever that is in there, yeah, and yeah. keep it circulating, and, and okay, and it makes you uh, uh, weak and stuff. Uh, but they put clean blood in you, right? Uh -huh, they clean, they same clean. thing like this, the same thing like this. Think about it, they're cleaning you out, and then they yeah. put fresh stuff in. It's the same thing like this bite right here. You flush all the sinful nation out of you, and God, and put the righteousness of God in you, fucking all the evil stuff out of you. You know, like confess your sin, do what He tell you to do, get it all out of you, and they build up, you grow right here, Jeff. you grow right here with this. Mm -hmm. You grow with this, and you grow, and you grow, and you grow with that. You know what? And you put it back what? Clean this in you. See why? All the simple stuff getting out of you. That's a good way to put it. And you put this right, and you put the word of God right in you. It's growing, 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 growing to the holy temple of the Lord. You know what? Right in the Bible. Tell me the first John, chapter 4. First John, chapter 4. Verse 20. First John chapter 4, verse 20. Okay. So wait for that first, please. Yeah. If a man said, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has, has not seen? How is this? Yep. Think about this. I confess my sins to God, mm -hmm. who I have not seen at all. I haven't seen God at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same thing. I confess to God, but 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 I can't confess my sins to the person I sin against. Mm -hmm. The exact same thing. Amen. The exact same thing. Boy, well, these people confess my sins to God. God, I'm sorry, I see it. What's in that wrong with that? But then you come right, you confess it to the person you sin against. Mm -hmm. That's it. So how? So once again, verse twenty. If a man say I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he who he have seen, I have seen you. But I can confess my sins to you. Right. Right. How can he love God who he have not seen? How can he love God who he have not seen? Right. Mm -hmm. God, I guess I love you. I'm up here scared to confess my sins to you or obey you. No, I, I guess I love you. That just yeah. follow God by his word. That's it. By his word, word here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to teach the gospel of Christ. I'm going to teach eternal life. And I'm going to teach the truth, meaning of God's word. I have one more. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5 17. 2 Corinthians 5 17. And the reason why you can. Uh, Confess your sin. Second Corinthians chapter five. Yeah. And seventeen. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Okay. 
I mean, this probably was get by getting old. I mean, it was new. <laughs> what for? You know, I, I got it. Uh, it was just yeah. something to get you for a birthday. Mm, no, well, I have plenty at home. But I, I just love it. This one, I say, I ain't gonna let it get ragged this there. I'm gonna make sure I keep it up. But <laughs> it happened. I went through so many of them. Five seventeen. At five seventeen. That's why you confess your sins. It kind of reads right here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things become new. Mm -hmm. So when you confess your sins, you right, to God, and why you sin again, you know, right, that's old things. The old things now. So right, you don't worry about them no more. Because because you had did what you had uh, uh, confessed your sin, you uh, you also you had a uh, uh, forsaken your sin. That's old things now. You don't worry about the glory but try to find somebody who you sin again, who you have sin again because that's impossible. Mm -hmm. But the ones you, right there in your face, because now you are actually following Christ. You know, right? mm -hmm. Bell, confess what I said. Bell, we go your way. That's how you're supposed right. to do. That's how you're supposed to do. That's confessing your sin. And, and anything else, anything else. It's not obeying the gospel of Christ. I show you in Luke what he have, how he confessed his sin. He can he can sing his heaven and his father. I show you how to confess your sins. It's right all right here. Mm -hmm. The word of God tells us what we need to do. We want to have eternal life. And we, we, like I say again, the Bible said we got to confess our sin. You better confess your sin. Let no one take nothing different. Because trust me, if they tell you that you can make it a habit this way, that way, this way, this way, without following God, they'll lie to you. And I promise you that. They'll lie to you. The word is here for a reason. All they got to do is stay in the word of God. It's here for a reason. They're lying to you. They're not following the word of God and telling you that you can do this, that, this, that, this, that, and this will make to the kingdom of heaven. Because I see it all the time on the uh, on social media, you know right? And they're not saying the truth. Of God's word, but I thank God, uh, God Almighty, He gave me the opportunity to teach the gospel, the true meaning of His divine holy word, and my scripture with scripture. I, I thank God for that. I really do thank God for that because it's not about me, because I know I have sinned. I know how to sin. I know that. But now I follow Christ. I confess my sin. I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. I confess my. Sin. I follow Christ. I forsake my sin. I don't keep on doing them. I follow Christ now. Right? I live for Christ now. Do I, do, I, do, I, do I have faults? Yes, I have faults. Do I make mistakes? Yes, I make mistakes. But yes, still, you know, I follow Christ. And as I keep on growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, I'm, I'm growing out of the mistakes. Amen. Out of the faults. But, take, but it takes time. But you got to try. You got to try. You got to make sure that you try to follow Christ the way he tells you to. Don't let Satan handle you. That's what he wants. He, if he, once he see you try to follow God, okay, he's going to put something in your way. Okay, if you like to do this, he's going to put that in your way. If you like to do he's going to put that in your way. If you like to do that, he's going to put that in your way. That's how Satan works to keep you from following God. Amen, brother. Amen. He wants the true, Satan wants the true believers out here who follow in Christ. Mm -hmm. He don't want those who not follow in Christ. He had them for eternity already. Mm -hmm. But once they do try to come out of darkness through his light, to a life growing gospel of Christ, he can try to throw another monkey wrench in their plan, all right? Or send people around you who's not good. That's how he works. He's evil. You got to make sure. He's an evil spirit, an evil being, and you got to make sure that you stay fast with God's word. I'm here for some words of comfort. Stay strong. And when I tell y'all that, I tell myself that as well. Stay strong. Because Satan's out here, he try to corrupt people day in and day out. We gotta stay strong and never give up. It won't have any questions. But those out there, once again, don't be deceived. God's word, the, take the Bible and just read. Study these scriptures. Don't give up. Distant yourself away from people who are not following God. Love them, but you don't come around people who are not following Christ. Who follow this world, you don't come around them. You love them, and you care for them, yes, and you pray for them, but you don't come around them and hang and party. You don't do them things. Now you try to follow Christ. You want eternal life. Let no one, no, no one, take your reward from you, which is eternal life. Amen. Anyone have any questions? Uh, go ahead, close the prayer. Let's go up prayer. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, once again, dear Lord, and once also lastly, we thank you for it, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that we have anything that in our hearts and minds will keep us still up with doing what we need to do that is right in your eyes, in your sight. Please remove that inequity, that evil from us, Father God, and help us, dear Lord, to stay focused and, and, and confess our sins, those who are here or those out there, dear Lord, and to keep on following you and do the things you have us to do, dear Lord. It's not about us. It's not about us at all, dear Lord, but it's about making it to the kingdom of heaven. Help us to understand that and we go forward in our lives, dear Lord. We thank you for so much that you have done for us. Even though bad things happen, good things happen, we still thank you, dear Lord, for what you have done for us, because bad things happen to your son. Thank you. And we just thank you for so much. So we just pray, Father, God, keep having us all out in this evil and simple lying and untoward world we live in. The world is so full of wickedness and hatred and backbiting and busybodies, you know, it's so terrible out here, Father God, but keep us strong through your word. That's why your word is here for a reason, the Bible is here for a reason, to keep us strong in evil times. Stay, can keep us strong. Help us to understand that. Help us to stay focused. We'll come to your word, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, to obscure evil, dear Lord, and help us, dear Lord, to overcome anything we cannot overcome through your gospel yes. of grace. Yes. Help us, dear Lord. For those, once again, out here going through a terrible time, coronavirus, and going and, 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 and poverty behind it, may you help them in bad times, bless them in good times, dear Lord, and build, up, build us all up in the faith where we're weak, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord. And for those who don't know you, yes. may they come to know you. Yes. and glorify you before yes. everlasting too late. Yes. Keep us strong and vigilant and help us to keep walking to the straight and narrow path when it comes to eternal life. And Father God, we pray all these prayers to you. Yes. Your most divine, holy, almighty, wonderful name. Thank you for so much. Your divine, holy, and beautiful name once again. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Beautiful lesson. Thank y'all for out there. Stay strong until we until I bring another lesson. Stay strong and never give up on eternal life. Take care. God bless.